Okay. Hello, everybody. Renzo here. Let's paint a new portrait today. Okay. Uh, the colors I have are titanium white, Naples yellow deep, cadmium red, kinocrium rose. It's pretty close to alizarin crimson, raw umber, phthalo blue. Ivory black and emerald green. Okay, I start just with uh, bristle brushes. These bristle brushes are just the kind that you find for really cheap. It's just for the beginning. For blending, I, uh, I use soft synthetic brushes, usually round brushes. Okay. Let's see. I'm gonna start just sketching. Just one second, okay. With this brush, this is number seven. I'm gonna use raw umber, not medium. If I wanna use a medium, I could use linseed oil, but I usually don't use any medium. <clears throat> and I toned my canvas down with acrylic. This obviously was a, obviously a white canvas origi originally, and then I added, I mixed orange and blue, and I added a transparent layer, a thin layer with a lot of water. Right now I'm just blocking the overall shape. I need to see the size of the face with my canvas. I love to paint, you know, bigger faces. <clears throat> Let's see, the eyes nose mouth i think i can make it a little bit bigger let me think let me think mm. no that's okay but if i make it bigger maybe nobody's nobody's gonna notice because it's gonna be just a tiny bit okay hey hello chris chris is saying angry girl girl portraits are back <laughs> Hello, Lynn. Hello, is Crowderry. Hello, Mark. Sylvia. Hello, Jonas. Hello, Prabhu. Thank you. Hello, Tina. Uh, Tina say I become a member, but it doesn't recognize me. Can you help me at another time? Okay, I'm gonna check out Tina. Thank you. Thank you for becoming a member. Yeah. Okay. And I like it, the, you know, the expression, but one thing that, and, I mean, I like the expression, that's why I pick up the photograph. But usually when I paint, I love to pick up photograph where I can see so clearly light and shadows. In this case, it's more about hair expression that light and shadows. What makes, you know, about values that they say lack of a really dark shadow mix makes this face a bit difficult to paint okay because well i used to squint a lot and when i squint i rely on copying dark shapes like for example this eye i'm squinting now and i see this that's pretty dark like that and it's easy to copy thinking that this is just a shape when i squint you know the photograph becomes kind of blurry and I copy the same, you know, translating just that from the photograph to my canvas. But I don't have more, just the eyes, a little bit of on the nose, a little bit on the mouth. Okay, and then um, I have darker values around because of the hair. But let's see, anyway, I like hair expression and that's what I want to capture today uh, you know I use a couple a couple of raw umbers one is from Rembrandt and the other one is from Winton and I got here uh, this one is from Rembrandt and the one that I'm gonna put here now is from Winton this one that I know you, you all are going to notice the difference, but the color is thicker and a bit darker. Okay, let's see. Okay. 
and squinting and comparing what about the size of this the, the head I like it uh, what do you think maybe a bit bigger a little bit I got the neck here I think that's okay. Hmm. Okay, 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 okay. Hmm. Just thinking, thinking. Comparing right now, I I know that I don't have that much, but thinking about the size and comparing for the position of the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Okay. Okay, let's continue. Now, I'm going to mix this raw umber. A little bit of uh, this is Na Naples yellow deep and red. This is going to be for the shadows. I added too much red. More raw umber in Naples yellow. Okay, I'm gonna switch to another brush, this one. I wanna lay down more paint. You know, with this brush, this is a soft synthetic brush. I can just move the painting pretty lightly, pretty softly, pretty nice. Okay. But I'm switching to this one, and if I use the same amount, amount, amount of paint, it's kind of difficult to move it. And I'm doing, using this because I want to add more paint at this stage. Okay, in order to use this brush, I gotta just put more paint on my palette. And then I can just lay down the paint more easily. I want a thicker layer, okay? It's not really thick, thick, but enough, you know, to get, uh, to get some volume on the face and enough to get a little bit of texture. Okay. Let's see. Oh, more Naples yellow. color is too dark anyway I'm thinking right now just that I don't want to get at the very beginning a kind of an orangey face I want some like a more like a grayish skin color and from there I'm gonna move to make it a little bit pinkier a little bit orangey I see this color looks kind of greenish, but obviously my canvas is orangey. You know, it means that this is not showing the real color. Something that I used to do sometimes is pick up a piece of paper, like this one, and I place here the color. Since this is white, it's more clear, you know, look at the color. Look at the color and look, look how different it look. It looks when it's on a white paper and when it's on top of this orangey color. Looks more greenish here, yeah? 
Yeah, okay. Uh, I know that, uh, and uh, not trying to, let's say, to copy match the color from the photograph. I just want a base here, and my my base is gonna be more about about values than a perfect color. And I try to keep it simple in terms of I don't add in more variety. Look at those colors I have here. I don't have a lot. We don't need a lot at the beginning. I'm gonna make it lighter. Moving this up, just adding more Naples yellow, a touch of red, just a tiny touch of red. Naples yellow and chemium red. Okay. Now, what I'm thinking is I'm going to repeat in terms of values, and I'm thinking, hey, this color. It's gonna be a good base where I'm gonna just lay down on top more orangey you know colors and some maybe pinky color but right now I got as you can see clearly maybe I don't know if that's so clear but I got a value that's a shadow another value this this one and this lighter one here and I can even have more one more value for lights the face okay in that way I got some volume even that is a sketch right now I, I got the feeling that this is rounded okay okay let's continue I'm gonna use another brush. I mean, I have used just one brush. Usually, I use like a lot of brushes. Okay, uh, I'm gonna paint the background. I'm gonna use a little bit of this green. Uh, the last painting I painted uh, the, this a greenish background. I don't know. It's kind of I like it, the color. I'm gonna paint again with this emerald green. I was saying the last time that this emerald green does a color that I used to use a lot. Well, uh, just especially for the skin color. A lot, a lot. You know, not pure, obviously, because it's kind of, it's not a full saturated green, but definitely it's pretty strong, but when you lay down this color here, or you mix with a touch of, let's say, burnt sienna, raw umber or you know you're knocking down this green and you put it on some areas that you know on the face that you're gonna see some green even making this face even greenish it doesn't matter you know at this stage it's not that it doesn't matter it works pretty nice and another thing that I used to use this color it was for to glaze I love to glaze with this color it was pretty amazing for me transparent Raw umber, white, and emerald green. Okay. I like it. Hello Sylvia, hello Co Chic, hello Bear, Bakis, thank you, hello Jonas, Marius, Ernest. Capturing emotion is most difficult. Hey, okay. Yeah, 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 always. Hello Marius, hello Bob. 
Hello, Michael Brains. Hello, Prince Joshua. Hello, Eric. Is that a pen or you painting on? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, this is a, a, a canvas. No, 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 not a pen on a canvas. Hello, Karen. Hello, Beatrice. Hello, Majura. No, it's a canvas. Uh, yeah, I used to paint on, on canvases or panels. It's kind of switch between one and the other. Okay, I'm gonna add more paint. While well, I was just reading, that was kind of resting my eyes from, you know, from the painting. What about adding just a uh, napal yellow and a little bit of green for this highlight here? Yeah, it's kind of it's really cool uh, highlight. I like it. No. Obviously, it goes with the green on the background. But it doesn't mean that it's going to stay that way. I can just make it warmer by adding more Naples yellow and a touch of red. And just add a touch of a warmer color here. I can make just make these two uh, different color temperatures just share the same space and create more contrast. Let's see, I need a little bit of a uh, little bit of orange, cadmium orange, just a tiny bit. I don't want to make the face pretty orangey. Okay. The nose, the highlight on the nose. Squinting down my eyes, just checking out the lights that we see on the photograph. One thing, remember, all the lights has different values. The highlight here, the light that is here, is going to be different from the light here, okay? Sometimes we just pick up just the same color and we just lay down the same amount of paint. I got more paint here, I got less paint here. That means if I mix I mix this color here, I'm going to end up with a light, a lighter area that is not going to be that bright as the light here on top. Okay. Just, just remember that we work always with a value scale. And when it's about the lights, we need to think that we every light has a different value on the value scale. I repeat that because it's pretty common that sometimes we pick up a lighter color and we just put it everywhere. Okay, and if the best way to to understand what happens, you know, with light, is to do a simple exercise of uh, painting or drawing a sphere. And by doing that, which is pretty simple, we understand how the light moves on a rounded surface and the face is a rounded surface. How the values just change from being from light from the lighter areas to the darker areas. Yeah. Hello Michael, hello hello Petra, hello po Paula. Yeah. Hello Samantha. Yeah. Ever ever mix your paints with palette knife? I got a question here. Uh, no, to be honest, uh, no, oh, yeah, a few times when I had painted uh, like a bigger, bigger painting, yeah, because I needed a lot of paint, but, uh, yeah, it's, you know, this is something that I kind of wanted to do, I just, you know, taking me back to thinking when I was a student I, and I remember a couple of my friends maybe the ones that they were pretty organized they're always mixing with a palette knife 
which I thought was always pretty nice, but I tried to do it. It just like, you know, I it, uh, I spent it too much too much time mixing. It was like pretty time consuming for me, and I wanted to see you know what I was painting just right away on my canvas, and not uh, kind of get all everything uh, mixed on the palette in order to apply it. It's kind of half of my mixture was on the palette and half on, on, on my canvas. Yeah. Okay, but that's different when, when from teaching. From teaching is a different thing. But the thing is that I never, I never did that. But the good thing about mixing with a palette knife, you know, is that we got really clean colors. And that's a good, really good thing. If somebody just, you know, like I'd like to use the palette knife, use it because it's a really, really nice tool. Yeah, it's pretty useful. Definitely pretty useful. You know, we kind of uh, create some habits over time with over the years okay and some habits are good some aren't and the thing is that uh for basically most of the painters that i have seen i think it's pretty nice just mixing with a palette knife anyway so many times so many times we don't even know you know, because we don't see the process of a painting, we just see the final result. We don't know if the painter have just mixed the color with a palette knife, with brushes, or whatever. Or whatever. Hola, Miriam. Gracias. Hola, Frank. Gracias. Hello, Oak. Oh, thank you, Paula. Cash show. Yeah. Hello, Slick Oils. Uh, hello, Juan Carlos. Okay, let's continue. Now I'm gonna use this mix of raw umber with a little bit of cadmium red to draw. We're just thinking about this brush now, like it's a pencil. Okay, and not too much. Are you seeing? I don't have too much paint. And just like the way that you use a pencil, you know, when we use a pencil, we, th we do things like this. At the beginning, at the blocking stage, you know, to draw the eye, I would do something like one line, another line, one, you know. You see the blocking? Okay, the same I'm doing here. And I do a li just a little bit. To do this, I'm not squinting and open my eyes really wide. Just to see clearly. Okay, now I squint on my eyes to see dark spots. Okay, about the nose, simplification again. What you see on the shadow, I see is basically this. One, two lines. Just that. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. You see? Just that. Now, to draw one side of the nose, I usually I check out and look for an alignment. A usual alignment on the front view is an alignment, a very good alignment between the one side of the nose and the tear duct. Obviously, that's going to uh, vary from person to person depending on the size of the width of the eyes, the width of the nose, sorry, and how much the eyes are closer to each other. Now, for the mouth, uh, squinting, just uh, trying to see the line, darker line between the lips. And I can just do this. One, two. Okay. It's like I, ha I did the same that I did on the nose, but obviously it doesn't have the same angle. But I drew this in two portions. This, this, and a darker stroke for below the mouth okay 
Now let's use another brush to put down some more color. We know that we need to add more reddish colors on the face, especially on the areas that there is more blood. Okay, and that's the nose. The cheeks. Okay, the chin. Just be careful about the value. Every area has a different value. Okay, and the eyelids. How much you add? It's up to you, you know. Uh, like I said before, it's not about copying the the colors from the photograph. We can get really close if we want, obviously. It's just perfect, you know. But it's about at the end what you want to see on your painting. You want to see just a copy from the photograph, or you want to see something more artistic? It's up to you. Okay, really up to you. Sometimes I start with an idea in my head, like oh, I'm gonna create like a more expressive painting, and ended up blending a lot. And that's okay, you know. At the end, everything is okay. And and sometimes I I start thinking that I wanna just create like a really nice painting, pretty soft, smooth out everything. And I ended up with something a bit more exp expressive, but not so expressive like crazy brush strokes. I have done maybe some really thick, thick uh, paints in terms of a, uh, in terms of the application of the amount of paint, maybe just five, six times. Okay. Okay. Let's see. I squinted down my eyes. I'm gonna just uh, mix a little bit of um, black and white. Just a little bit. I want to see the eyes, okay? Let's see. Yeah. That's good, that's good. I need a really dark, dark accents. I'm gonna mix, uh, I need another brush. A clean one. This one it has a lighter color. This one maybe no. Okay, this one I think I'm gonna pick up just pure black and kind of create on rose. Okay, let's paint this really dark. We just need an accent here. Another accent there. Okay. Now, let's think about the whole head, the whole face. We're gonna get some sharp edges to make the face pop. We're gonna just, just fade a little bit the edges. Obviously, the hairline here the edges are pretty soft but I see what it looks like a sharp edge on the photograph on this area okay I, I don't think I'm gonna copy that now here definitely I want a really really dark value okay now here the same a really dark dark value And maybe those spots are gonna be a really sharp edges here. That one, this one, yeah. And I can get your softness here. Okay, softness here.
see. Too early to know uh, where I'm gonna add more color or more values or if I'm gonna make the face a little bit wider here or narrow the face. Uh, Here, I'm gonna use this darker color again and for the eyebrows there not too much paint okay and there stepping back yeah I like it yeah what about the hair and the background I'm gonna make it kind of blurry Maybe I keep some sharp edge, maybe just here and here, yeah? Okay. Now, now I want you to understand how I'm thinking. You know, I'm thinking in terms of building volume, okay? At the same time, thinking about edges. Look at this difference between this edge. There's nothing here and this edge. Even that I'm not done, obviously, the idea is to Drive, drive the tension here and here okay to create volume Sh darker and sharp edges makes things pop okay hello Ursula hello Kathy Fleming hello Samira hola Juan Felipe hello Ben Corman saying thank you may I ask you what's the baseboard material you are using it's canvas this is a canvas it's you know, it's not on board. If I touch it, you see how it move. Okay. Hello, Daniel. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, Daniel is saying, hi, thank you for sharing. It is incredible to me how you manage to paint and speak at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a thing that you, you got you, we got I got used to you know I remember that when I shared a, a studio with my friends it was pretty common just paint and talk about any not about painting you know about about any, anything and uh, uh, I shared that studio for a few years I got used to to that and then I moved. To a different, a smaller studio when I was just alone. It was basically just a, a room, you know. And I got my bed, my easel, and that's it. At that time, obviously, I didn't have any computer. That's it. Just the only things I, I got on my studio. Okay, and I got used to just to stay alone there day and a night and paint and when i got some company i was kind of like i don't want anybody here <laughs> you know i cannot paint i cannot concentrate with people speaking to me yeah and then i was there for like maybe six months i moved to another studio with a couple of friends one friend told me hey we're renting a big place do you want to you know share the rent we're gonna paint one of my friends is gonna be they're gonna be some theater there it's gonna do some theater the other one is, uh, was teaching and for me there's a room for you know for just to paint and I said okay and then I got used to again it took me a little bit of time get used to my friends and then it was pretty common just for me paint there for hours and then have somebody to my side, you know. Some of my friends just speaking to me, like, how do you do that? Oh, I'm doing this and that. Or speaking about anything. 
you know but it's just i think it's just it's just 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 it's just about getting used to yeah. nowadays i think i could share a studio with anyone and that's because of what the live streams that i'm doing you know and the classes that I, I have on Patreon, where I paint and I speak, and paint and I speak. I speak less when I get into the end. You know, I got tired, and then, you know, but at the beginning is a lot of speaking, painting, speaking. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm squinting. I kind of see the same light that I have here. It's kind of closer to this light shouldn't be like that I see too much greenish color here now in order to get something rounded we need to understand that the values change as they go and move you know surrounding and, and the, the roughness of the, what we are painting okay let me, let me do it instead of speaking okay like here for example I know that this form here is turning yeah now maybe I don't see that the value changed that much. Let's say that I don't see it. I think it's pretty clear, but let's say I don't see it. Okay, based on things that I don't see, I don't see that, but I know that this form has to turn. And when the form turns, the value change. What I mean is that if I got, I have this value for this area, like this one, let's say this one, the value next to that has to be this one, has to be, or this one. Okay, why? Because the, that's the way that we create volume. We gotta keep that in mind always because that's why, or half the value scale, you know, that the ones I always have with me, that's more than foreseeing what's happening is to remind us what's happening because maybe we don't have, somebody doesn't have enough experience like and enough practice to notice how the values change because some changes on values are pretty subtle then we have this you know you know to know what's happening to understand what's happening that's gonna that's why the knowledge you know everybody says that knowledge keep us uh, uh, help us to see more yeah okay it's just like uh it's just like not 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 it's it's not like uh, it's gonna we see more with time you know we see more with a combination of practicing and copying and obviously when we by repetition we know what happens on the form when it's turning or things like that and we're starting just to apply that in every paint we paint okay now I got that a little bit darker, you know. I trust that that's gonna make the form turn. I blend it a little bit. Another thing that happens when the form is turning that the color change. I cannot add an intense red or reddish color on the edge. Why? Because this, what's happening with color when it's turning is, you know, it's changing. I gotta grade down the color a little bit as it goes to the edges. What it means that if I got reddish colors on the face, okay, let's say here on the cheeks, here on the cheeks, the red, the color, that's gonna be on the nose. Okay, this is closer to us, the form here is turning and it's turning. Let's change the color a little bit make the color not that reddish is 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 more reddish than the other colors around but not too reddish like any any portion of the face that's is just coming forward you know that's the way how we move when we paint something that's three dimensional we got to keep in mind that every brush stroke that we are playing on a different portion of an object that is not flat it has to be a little bit different if let's say we paint something flat 
you know, we gotta just be so worried about keeping the color flat. No darker here, no lighter here, just one color. But when we work on a surface that is not flat, or we just creating the illusion that what we're painting is not flat, we gotta always think as we move, you know, as I'm moving down and thinking, hey, if I just do this, for example, here, you know, because I wanna blend it, I, I keep doing this, 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 what I did is I make I made this flat. I gotta think, hey, you know, about color. I gotta think about how the color just moves to make it be more grayish or, or more saturated. And how I'm gonna create volume by just adding a lighter value or a darker value. And then when I'm doing that, I'm thinking, hey, this value shouldn't be as bright as the other one that's next to next to that, or maybe to the value that there is on the is on the nose. It's always about everything that's happening on the face in terms of a surface that is like you know imagine ups and downs yeah. just like building up a puzzle okay, that's not just for the for painting a portrait okay that's that's for, for painting anything everything the same logic now we can keep track about this way of thinking about everything no kind of find it kind of difficult it's more that we practice practice and a lot of the things is just start working on a second plane in our brain it becomes second nature and we don't it looks like we don't thinking about those things but so definitely because of the practice we already know what to do okay keep squinting down my eyes again let's let read some questions hello Nieves hola Nieves gracias uh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, I'm looking for a question. Is it normal for the drawing to be rough? Abdul Kamis is asking that. Uh, yeah, I mean, the drawing is. The, the, what happens is different from painter to painter. Yeah. Hello, Fabio. Hello, Sajit. The thing is that some painters, they love to have like a more sculptural approach and when you work thinking like a more sculptural approach it's more about form than a really tight accurate drawing okay and other painters just, just prefer a really tight accurate drawing and from there start just building up form and and it's just what you want. It's not that one way is wrong or the other way is better. No, no, no. It's just what you choose. Just that. And, at, you know, the thing is that at the end, obviously the drawing, uh, when we paint something realistically, you know, the drawing is kind of disappear. But I'm speaking about the drawing in terms of lines. Well, at the beginning we have a lot of lines. That's the way to, to, to draw it, yeah? That's the way we put something on the paper with lines. Okay? But the end is going to be about values, no lines. We're going to have some sharp edges. Maybe that's going to be the closer thing that we're going to have to, to a really sharp line that we lay down with a pencil. Okay, like, like for example, this one that I got here. But eventually we need to soften. Okay. I work, uh, I always speak about edges on my paintings on every live stream. Remember that usually we see more softer edges than sharp edges on a painting. Okay. That's because it's all, everything is about transition. 
from one value to another value and sometimes painters we used to kind of soften some edges even more like for example something pretty common but I'm not I'm common but I'm not saying that you're gonna do this on every paint here on the bottom lip you can just soften this the edges look at that like creating a communication here okay but now speaking about values and saying that there's no edge but not saying that we're not we're gonna ignore values no no lighter here okay by doing that we adding some softness some atmosphere to the face okay by doing the opposite like let's say it here on this shadow I make this sharp okay and pick up on light and I do the same I make it sharp I'm making that little portion pop that's how we use edges to you know add to the illusion of depth the volume volume again sharp edge and now I soften the edges here but it's not just about those edges you know combination edges and values first step it's always values it's about values always okay without values I mean ages are not gonna do the work I can make it this really sharp And I can just soften. Now remember that by softening the corners, we help into the illusion that the mouth is not on a surf on a flat surface. But it's not just about that. We need to work there and try to get the values, maybe without any sharp edge, without any line to indicate. But it's about it becomes more about edges it, you know this kind of this kind of a little bit difficult because uh, it's difficult to try to draw something you know like I'm doing right now with the corner of the mouth for example draw this yeah okay and then my next move is just make it the blurry that's in the first you know somebody's gonna say why do you do this if you wanna basically destroy it yeah, because I want the value there. I don't want the detail. Yeah. And yeah, maybe why don't you do this? Like I, what we see, like that. Yeah. Because I don't want that. I want softness here. That's gonna help with the illusion that the mouth is turning. That's not on a flat surface. But. I wanna, it's different, it's different have a sharp edge than having the value, uh, here the value is darker. Yeah, that's different, okay? Just try to keep in mind that there's different things. One thing is a sharp edge or a line, like a drawing, another thing is a, a value. Okay, we can, we can get the tear without having really sharp edges, it's just, just values that are kind of blurry, soft and move from the light to shadow creating form what would be the opposite the opposite for me that would be like picking the same color i got here and just go like this like all the way like that that's sometimes something that we do and that would be like drawing by doing that i, I would make the mouth flat okay no. That's why we squint a lot. When we squint, 
we see more easily, you know, the spots that are darker and the areas that are kind of blurry, that there's no definition. When I squint, I see it here, dark, 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 okay? And I see the side blurry, blurry. Now the nose, the same with the nose. Okay, let me see. Hello, Pili. Oh, hola, Pili Martinez. Hello, pa Pato Serrano. Hello, Christos. Jonas is saying, I like this saying. What do you think of it? That you're describing form with color. Oh, yeah, yeah, color and, and, and value. You know, color and value, there's a thing that is together. We cannot separate color from value. Okay, uh, to teach, we try to separate to make just easier for everybody to understand value and color. The only way to separate value and color is when we draw. That's why it's so important drawing. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put more paint on my canvas you know I want more volume here I'm gonna make make the face a little bit narrower.
what about a sharp edge here I think I need to narrow narrow more the face okay not yet not yet uh, okay here I'm gonna keep it soft even softer than what I see on the photograph here even more Here's where it's sharp. Okay. I'm gonna narrow the face a little bit. Okay, just there. Uh, this. This color is raw umber, but it's the winter. I'm using directly from the tube, like this. The one from Rembrandt is the one that I got here on the palette that I use it for the skin. It's more greenish and transparent than this one. <clears throat> Hello, Mervat. Andre uh, Ras Ras Van is in this channel. It's a treasure. Oh, thank you. I bought my first five tubes of paint after watching your videos. Hello from Romania. Oh, that's pretty. That's pretty nice. Uh, wish you the best. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, let's continue. Soften the eyes. Soften the eyebrow here. Okay, this is not gonna be about copy because I see that the eyebrow goes really sharp to this point, the same this one. I'm gonna keep it darker here on this portion that I'm blending now. I'm gonna make it soft and blurry up here. Okay. the face a bit more again then I've been narrowing the face slowly slowly okay I think that's no more than that I think yeah I'm not so sure yet but I don't think I'm gonna move I'm gonna narrow the face more Quentin trying to copy values what I mean if I'm just checking if this side is a little bit darker or lighter the same here the same here okay reddish but a bit darker
Remember, it's just like building a puzzle. But the thing is that we need to see, we need to learn to see how change every piece of this puzzle, how it change in color and and values. Okay, the, the way that we need to understand that, it's not that one color is gonna just become, that for example, this area, is gonna become darker. What could happen that this color, it could be more saturated here and becomes less saturated as it goes darker. Okay, now, there's no way the same thing for every painting, that's the common, but it could be the opposite. It could be that it could move to be more saturated Okay, now one thing, one rule that uh, is for, uh, f about shadows, we should try to keep the shadows transparent and warm and the light cool. okay? But not, no rule kind of applies for everything because depending on the light conditions, depending on the temperature, you know, we're gonna experience different things. We're gonna see different things. We gotta understand that because sometimes for me it was like my teacher told me something and I saw something different in a painting for me it was like, what? You know, I don't believe in this guy because he's telling me something different. No, it's not that. It's just different things for different paintings. Okay. We uh, kind of uh, learn the rules and then we gotta move you know, applying the rule, rules in a different way from painting to painting. The good thing is that there's so many, so many things that are just the same, are like just repetition and repetition. That's why we're gonna see improvement if we just keep practicing and practicing. Okay. Squinting. Mm -hmm. I need to make this side of the face a little bit dark. Okay. I'm going to make this color a little bit warmer. Clean the brush with paper towel and then I blend a little bit. Okay, I, I, you know what, I need to add some highlights to oh, the, the mouth here on top and highlight on the, on the lower lip. Okay, yeah, that's good. I'm adding a more greenish color from this side of the face. The same here. Around the mouth, the color is a little bit greenish. Or oh, grayish, okay. Let's say grayish, not greenish. Hello, Nikki. 
ela diz de Olá Manuel, hello Shu Dakar, hello my pack Sina, sorry if I mispronounce some names. I'm comparing, I'm thinking. Okay, let's continue. Uh, by the way, for the new people that is, you know, here for the first time, Happy New Year. This is the second video of this year. Okay, gotta check out values on the nose. The nose is a spherical form. I need more shadows here. I can make the shadow a bit warmer, or uh, let's say a grayish color, and then a warmer color next to the shadow. And what about reflected light? A lot of things to think when we paint, you know, a rounded form. We gotta think on the light, on the reflected light, on the values. And when we're painting something rounded on the core shadow, where's the core shadow here? There's always a core shadow. I think the core shadow on the nose is just here. how this form is moving okay trying to capture copy the values to create the illusion that the form is turning face a little bit that's better feel free to ask me any question this darker value on the chin. Okay. 
Jay Nikki, we all wish you a, a fast recovery. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see what we do. Okay, let's work on the control the, the, the chin here. What about that? Oh, a little bit of green. A little bit of more green here, and I'm gonna add a touch of this dark color just here on this portion, just there, just there, a little bit, a little bit. I wanna have a sharp edge. I wanna have this color that is is greenish, but is next to obviously the mouth, which is reddish, it's pinky, and uh, that's gonna create contrast definitely. Let's see. Let's see some sharp edges. I need we need a sharp edge always on the nose. Why? To make the nose pop. Okay. Oh, uh, you know that I got a Patreon account and Anyone can join now, and it's uh, I got it's free for a week. I mean, not 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 from a week counting from this day of a week. No, it's for anyone that joined. You're gonna have a free week to check out the classes on my Patreon. If you like it, you stay. If you don't like it, obviously you don't know, stay. The, the link to Patreon is on uh, uh, you know, the description box. You find the link to Patreon or and uh, on my bio, bio. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna add a highlight to the eyes. Okay. Uh, let's see this eye. I see the highlight on this eye. I don't see a highlight on this one. It's not that clear. But I'm gonna put it here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Laila is saying any tips on painting mirrors? Oh, a lot of contrast. <laughs> uh, Mark is saying I'm new to painting. I struggle to show the difference between the chin and the neck. Any tips? Yeah, I mean, for painting anything, anything is always about contrast. Contrast between values, contrast between edges, contrast uh, uh, in color, all of that. Uh, for example, if I want to just show the difference between the neck, uh, first I think that the neck is not the same level to the face, to, to my point of view. Okay? First, I know that. Okay, okay, pay attention. It's what we know, it's not what we see. Okay, you know, we know that, yeah, okay, that's a different level. After knowing that, I know what happens when something is not at the same level, it has a different color, a different value. Just because of no, I know that, I, I could make the neck a little bit darker. Okay, that's gonna make the neck recede a little bit. If I see a light on the neck, I'm not gonna make that light as bright as any light on the face for the same reason, okay? Now, that's about values. I don't know uh, about the question if the problem about drawing or painting the neck is about maybe anatomy. If that's the case, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna take you to study anatomy, okay? Uh, that's a different thing. Yeah, uh, you know, that's... 
that's more about drawing the skull, drawing the bones, drawing some muscles to understand what we see by beneath the, the skin. Okay, and that's gonna take more practice. That's a knowledge that we need to acquire anyway. Okay, but let's say that's different. What I'm explaining here is about values and color and how they, they change depending where where uh, where we stand you know in front of the, the color okay no you know we treat every object different depending how close it is to our point of view or how far away it is from from our point of view Oh, Mark Airy saying the neck is often darker, but if I paint it dark, it seems to project forward. Now, and here's another thing. Maybe you're painting that darker, but uh, maybe what's happening that the color, you're changing the temperature. And it's not just about the temperature of the neck. You gotta see always the relationship between, you know, the neck and, and, and the skin. Okay, I can make the neck lighter even than the skin and make it recede by knocking down the color. Uh, yeah, um, now the thing is there are some, there is no solutions like easy solutions when we paint and theory helps you know in terms of knowledge but painting is going to be always about practicing always about practicing now now let's say that you got some knowledge about what happens with color by reading books by watching me painting anything you gotta keep in mind that on every painting and it's gonna be like paint you know paint watching the photograph and paint reading a book next to next to you to your left you got the photograph to your right you got a book it's like you know on the left side you, so you see you copy and on the right side you use knowledge now the thing is that that's the tricky thing because when we paint we basically copy what we see and it takes more time to kind of replace or try to overlap what we see with what we know because it's kind of overlapping that it's not like we're gonna just base everything what we what we know obviously not because but there is a, sm a small important portion that is basically what's going to help us to improve and that's going to be knowledge okay and we need that we need to go over that path of always thinking about thinking that it's like i'm going to say something that maybe not makes doesn't make any sense but thinking that not everything that we paint is from the photograph Okay, and that's that's this is that that hap that's because we kind of not able to see like everything. We need some help, and the help is the knowledge. Okay, we kind of uh, that's why that's the example I put put at the beginning when I paint on a piece of paper to show how color the color look different on my canvas from a, a different on a different canvas, on a different situation. Okay. When we know that, we start to understand that it doesn't matter how hard we try to match a color. At the very beginning, we are, we're not able to see the real color. Okay. Okay, and I, I'm, I'm squinting down, I see uh, the white of the eye is a little bit lighter. I always I always put this example about the white of the eye. Okay, uh, and I have seen so many people painting the white of the eye white, pure white. I'm gonna repeat it. I have said that this so many times. Okay, what happens when you paint the white of the eye white, white, just white? What's happening is that you're not painting what you see. You're painting what you know. And you know that the white of the eye is white. Somebody asks you, why do you paint it the white of the eye white? Because I know it's white. 
Yeah, but you know what happens when the eye, the white of the eye, the sclera is in shadow, it's not white anymore. And that's the knowledge that we got. How are you going to break that by practicing and having new knowledge that's going to say, hey, you know what? You're, gonna, you're not going to paint this white because you know it's white. No. The new knowledge that you have show you a new path, a new road where we pay attention to values and how the values move from light to shadow. We don't pay attention to things that we know. We pay att attention to simple forms and how light moves on top of simple forms. It's pretty amazing. That for me is pretty amazing. How I see slowly people kind of starting to change, you know, improving how they see. Yeah. Now the thing is that that transition is pretty slow and I don't remember it myself kind of noticing when I started to kind of see more or, re or replacing the knowledge I, I had for new knowledge about how to, what to pay attention to or what's happening with uh, values, how they change instead of, instead of just trying to copy every little value because that's one thing that, that we all do at some point. For me it was always pick up my uh, palette knife or my brush and go really close to to when I uh, to the object that I was painting and lay down a brush stroke. You know, that was for me like, hey, yeah, I got the color, it's perfect. Then I go run to my canvas and lay down the paint. And then I mix again and go back to, you know, the still life because we cannot do that obviously on a real human face. And I mix the color and I go back to still life I remember that so clearly <laughs> that was you know I remember my teacher saying hey don't do that you don't need to do that you know but for me it was like well, I need to do that you know it's, it's, it's working and my teacher saying no it's not working you think it's working no it's not working at all but for me it was working you know but uh, but at, 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 at the end I understood that it didn't it didn't work that way. That, you know, it happens because we love. Uh, the first thing, my first approach, you know, I was so worried always about matching colors. Always, always. It wasn't about matching values, you know. Values, who cares about values? What's a value? I want to get the, the exact color that I see, you know. This. And with time, <laughs> for funny that it looks, it kind of, we say, I don't care about matching the color. I don't care now, you know, I'm going to care about that after put some paint on my canvas. Then I'm going to see if I, you know, I'm close or not. And we start just to kind of not worry anymore about, about that. Like it's going to be something like, oh, I'm going to do this. No, no, no. I know that. The color is gonna is kind of a consequence of values and and always uh, experience. And the more I paint, the more I'm gonna get closer. And sometimes, sometimes we don't even want to get closer. We don't want our own. We want our own version. Or we think that we can change what we see in, uh, to to get something better in terms of color values. Hello, experience history. Hello, Arabi. I'm good. Hello, it's Van. It's Van. Oh, I got a question about temperature here. You paint the cool highlight because you think they're. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't see that the, the highlight is yellowish or orangey. I don't think that her face is getting a really warm 
light on the face like a sunlight for example if I mix this here but it doesn't mean that I cannot mix this I mean this is cadmium orange this the tinting power of this cadmium orange is pretty it's pretty good I mix it with white and I can put it here too okay I think we will notice the difference that this is yellowish okay you can see that clearly I'm gonna zoom in I could use I could use this this color, yeah, definitely, on the highlight. Not alone, I can just put next to that color a, a cool color too, and I can just make these two colors just live together here, a warm and cool color. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in a bit more. So, like maybe too much definition on one eye. I'm gonna soften this eye. Kind of make it blurry. Difficult. Okay, I'm gonna pay attention to the values on the eyes. I squint in and I see, for example, that here is darker. again I see this darker here and darker here okay what about the other eye the same it's darker here We see that so clearly there. Okay, now about lighter values. Okay, I see this lighter here, here. The same happens here. Mm. 
Oh, G's, G's saying, I hope you paint someday a lion or a tiger. Yeah, I will try to paint different things. Yeah. I was thinking that, you know, for this new year, maybe painting a couple of days. Because uh, I mean, it's painting with stair. Yeah, it's, it's just like uh, I don't have sometimes enough time, like, kind of to paint just because I want to paint. You know, uh, and I uh, you know this makes it more exciting for me just to paint here. And I used to paint, I have painted maybe uh, I don't remember how many, but at least 10 pastel portraits. But that was pretty nice. Yeah, I read a comment. Yeah, I think it was Vermont. Yeah. Mer uh, What's you, yeah? Mervat, Mer, uh, Vat, yeah. That you said something about me painting more on pastels. Yeah. And, yeah, I wanna do that. And, and, and you know, we, we paint animals, still life, landscapes. We paint a lot of things on Saturdays on Patreon. Uh, which obviously is different because it's not free, this is free. But, the thing is that we paint, you know, but that, that's what kind of, uh, maybe I don't have enough time to paint in here, like everything that I wanted. But anyway. And uh, I'm just thinking about what I have painted in the last years on my channel. Maybe a couple of Still lives, yeah. a few paintings with acrylics, and I decided at some point to create a, a, a new channel for my acrylics paintings. Yeah, I didn't have the time to paint there. Nikki saying, you know, Renzo is broadcasting from both YouTube and Facebook. Yeah, that's what I do usually. He sits at his command center, paints, talks, and teaches. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, home studio. Thank you. Uh, Sylvia, do you never use pen pastels? Oh no, I, I haven't yet. By way, I, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna use pen, pen pastels. I have seen so many amazing works with pen pastels. Yeah. paint the hair a little bit
Oh, mm -mm. Let's see. I'm gonna soften here. on the nose a little bit darker here A little bit of a sharp edge just here below the light. Let's highlight there. Uh, now maybe the nose is too dark. The shadow on the nose is too dark. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Try to keep some softness on the eyes. Another highlight below the eye here. Here, here too. Okay, I need more black here. Black with kind of green rose. The same way that when we paint, you know, we add lights and highlights and then we continue painting and we see that those highlights, they don't look that bright. It happens the same with uh, some shadows. We need to add another layer. In this case, I want this accent here, the sharp. We need all the values, okay, on the painting. I mean, for me, uh, I, I love to use a darker, darker value, in this case, black. But if somebody doesn't look to use black, you can just use any other darker color. A good option is mixing brown amber with ultramarine blue. But the thing is that we need a darker value, okay? The darker, darker value. The same way that we have the highlights that are pretty bright, the same way that we need darker, darker value. Just for me, it's pretty simple. Just pick up black and that's it. So I'm gonna think twice about that. Some comments. 
Chris, hello Chris. Chris, she's looking grumpy. She must work in my office. Oh wow, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. She's, she looks up about to strike, strike if you mess with her. <laughs> hey. okay. I got a question here. Uh, what brushes do you use for fine detail? I bought so many and I can't seem to get the right one. Okay, this, I got this set. Okay, the brand is so different, you know, I kind of have the same brushes from different places the brand is changed but the brush is the same they call it liner brushes here you know it's liner brushes and then you got a set of like six brushes for two dollars they are pretty cheap they don't they don't last for a long time they are pretty good but you know don't don't expect that they are gonna be like uh, gonna stay maybe more than a couple of weeks and they're done you know maybe less maybe more depending how much you paint depending on the surface you paint on but these are pretty good for the terrace all of them i got number double zero this one is double zero this one is zero that's basically what i use zero double zero i got a set here i i, ha I had a set let me see no, no, I don't have it. No. Oh, yeah, I found it. <laughs> it's on the floor. Just one second. Look at this. It just it came just six brushes. This brand is just, don't look for the brand. You know, I have find this, the same brushes with different brands. Hola Sandro. Dice cuando la pintura está, es en varias sesiones, refrescar con aceite o trabajar en seco. Refrescar con aceite. Sandro is asking me what to do when you work on so many different sessions. What to do, you know, after the painting is, it dries. And I said that you need to oil it out before continue working. Una capita de aceite delgada y suficiente para pintar. You know, a thin layer of oil paint and it's enough. Mm. Yeah. Uh, since these brushes are pretty cheap, I would say try buying different ones, you know, different brands, this and that. Yeah. Maybe some of them are not gonna be pretty good, but the thing is, I use them when they're, they are just uh, new, you know, pretty pointy. After a few times, they just start to fray out. And like I said before, that happens depending how much you paint. And and the surface, more than anything, the surface. If the surface is kind of rough, definitely, you know, you're gonna kill the brushes so fast.
I'm making this a little bit lighter, the eyebrow here. Just to create more volume, make it this rounded. Okay, the same I'm gonna do here. Green. A little bit of a light for the tear duck. Okay, just there. And soften here the tear duct. Uh, we don't see it, but I'm gonna soften this a bit more. I mean, what I mean is we don't see it like with a lot of detail. See if I can make it darker here without touching the darker, the dark on the hair. I think oh, I need to darken up the edge. Now I'm thinking maybe that I need to make the face a bit wider. Mm. Well, I'm not gonna move that. Yeah, no, doesn't matter. I don't think that I need a lot of work on the hair. I guess with that I think it could be enough. Just uh, just about the edges. Just make it this blurry. Okay, a little bit sharp here. Sharp here, blurry here sharp and just gone here nothing here uh, let's see let's see if that's okay
Mm. This is really light, light green. This is pinky. I need to step back, check out. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I think I'm almost done. Eh? You know, I would love to spend a lot of time of each painting, but I don't want to get to the point that I'm going to add more and more detail, detail, detail. I want to keep on a point that is kind of sketchy and with realism. Okay. Oh, lightly saying, I love how you do here. Okay, any tips from painting here? Well, oh, <laughs> the, you know, I what I do is first I paint the hair just one color, flat, solid. Okay, and then I add lights on top. If that helps in some way, I know that's you know. Hmm. Uh, I know that's kind of just maybe pretty simple, but. Uh, try just one thing you paint the hair solid one color you know it's, uh, uh, don't add too much paint make it thinner you know dark but thin and then you add more paint for the lights okay now uh, depends how much you want to add detail you continue working with uh, smaller brushes I use, I could use, you can use fan brushes. In this case, I'm using the brushes for blending. They work pretty good. Now, I don't want to add details for some for something that I'm seeing on the painting right now. You know, I see all the attention on, on the eyes and the nose, which I love it. Okay. Some edges like here. I'm going to soften this a little bit. Here, here. And that's enough. Then an edge here, here, and here is blurry, blurry, and all the rest is obviously kind of blurry. Lost, you know, all this is lost. Okay, and the same for this portion here, for example. Now, I'm not copying the photograph right now. I'm thinking about my painting and how I'm making the face just pop what i'm gonna just need to maybe sacrifice in order to to get this effect maybe i can do that with this portion even a bit more maybe the mouth here okay definitely soften this even more we gotta be careful because things like this are gonna affect the likeness definitely yeah but i think the likeness is Good enough, you know, it's not perfect, but good enough for, for, for this practice. Okay. Now, the softness on the eyebrows, I'm doing that with the same intention to create volume to make this turn. This is the same, okay? I'm not copying this sharp edge here, making the blurry. But I'm keeping the contrast of this really sharp edge here and here okay now this this takes a bit of a bit of time just to to know where to place it and we gotta try one time another time yeah okay uh, Chris Harvey is saying imagine she's joined the side of the class in this month <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that was pretty funny. Hi, Ben. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Hello, Ernest. Senrizo has captured her deep but immature emotions. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you, Mervat. Thank you, Rebecca. Okay, 
<laughs> okay. Uh, uh, what else? You know, I think that it should stop now. It's not like I, I don't want to do more things. I want to paint more and more and more. But that's the thing. That's the point. That's the thing that I don't want to. I don't want to kind of kill the softness of my painting by adding more and more details. Highlight on the nose is just too harsh. Mm, yeah, I think it's too harsh. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, I think I'm almost done. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I gotta stop, you know. I would love to do more, but no, no. Just this. I think I'm just where I want this painting to be. Yeah, let me zoom in to show some of the colors, some of the touches. See? Yeah, I think that's that's enough. Eh? Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, everybody for being here. Let me see comments. Oh, hello, Monique. Oh, okay. Thank you. What's the green color called? Uh, this coat is called uh, called uh, emerald green. This is an old tube. It's from Winton. The, the, for the time that they have, they number it. You know the tubes. Look at that number eighteen. I don't think nobody's gonna find this with the number. But anyway, that's a, I think you can look for it on in on the internet. Emerald green. Okay, I'm gonna repeat the colors. I have taken a white, uh, Naples yellow deep. Came in red, kind of green, rose, raw umber, thalo blue, ivory black, and emerald green. Uh, okay. Uh, you will know that you can go to my Patreon and join and try for free, you know, for a week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, that's it. I just, you know, moving my eyes from the painting to the draw, the painting to the photograph. I see some differences, but uh, you know, if I spend more time, you know, you know, I'm gonna. I, I just wanna keep this. 
I don't even want to paint this because I, I think the combination between the green and the orange and my canvas is good. And seeing the orange here and there. You know, now the color here is too greenish. I know that because, but I don't see it. You know, it's, it's like, it's just like the, all the tension is here. And that's, that's all I want. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that's good enough for today. Okay, see you all next week. Thank you so much for being here with me. Yeah, you know, if you like it, subscribe to my channel. I go live once a week. Okay, take care, everybody. See you all next week. Bye.